Kent E. Nielsen here, and I am delighted to have you with me. Christ came into the world to do the will of his Father, and he prepared a way for you to do likewise. Join me to put him first in your life, receive the fruits of godliness, and realize your divine mission to be like him. You were born and commanded to do greater works than he did. Now let's go to work. Come to a place where I'm forced to think, as Napoleon Hill calls it. Here are his words, quoting Andrew Carnegie. When men are forced through adversity and temporary defeat to change their habits and to think their way out of difficulty, my experience has taught me that a man is never quite so near success as when he, that which he calls failure has overtaken him. For it is on occasions of this sort that he is forced to think. If he thinks accurately and with persistence, he discovers that so-called failure usually is nothing more than a signal to rearm himself with a new plan or purpose. Most real failures are due to limitations which men set upon their own mind, and if they have the courage to go one step further, they would discover their error. Outwitting the Devil, Chapter 1 by Napoleon Hill, emphasis added, and let's, uh, let's continue. Thus, my thinking has led me to recognize God's hand in me no longer being an employee. In other words, as I'm no longer an employee as of today, um, I recognize God's hand. I now have the ability to put my all into the achievement of my definite chief aim, an aim I've been refining for the past month or so and now share with you. Again, this is Kent's definite chief aim, to point individuals seeking further light and truth to Jesus Christ, even the mark, that they may come unto Christ and turn their weakness to strength and do greater works than he did. Why? Through Christ, excuse me, through Christ's infinite atonement, you have access to God as your mentor. You tap into his power and you become one with them in the process. How? Come unto Jesus by raising your sights to the master mark, then striving to emulate him by discovering, developing, and disseminating your talents for good continuously. As you become one, power from on high will enable you to do more than you can on your own unto perfection. So continuing with the podcast here. Thank you for listening in and for your support. Though we may have not met in person, it is a privilege to associate with you in talking about the weightier matters of life rather than the drops in the bucket. You and I are meant for more than we can imagine. So let's look to Jesus at excuse me, Jesus the mark, and allow him to stretch our vision. On a personal note, I've been pushed and stretched much this past month as I've taken seriously the resolve to make Jesus the mark in every area of my life. Earlier in a previous podcast, I, I mentioned I've I struggled breaking through the 250-pound mark for the past six months or so. And in the past three weeks, I've not only blown by the 250, I'm now under 240 pounds. Yes, hurrah, celebrate those little victories as Blair Singer has taught me many years ago. God is good. Not only am I trimming down, but I'm more engaged in exercise, energy, and focus. Now I've been released from my job. It's like a green light to run full time. I've readjusted my schedule, and instead of putting an hour to three hours a day into the Jesus is the Mark movement, I can now put 10 plus hours in. I'm thrilled, excited, enthused, and filled beyond my own power. 
um, thanks to our Father in heaven. And again, I thank you for allowing me to be part of your life and hope that lighting myself on fire serves as a catalyst for you, not only to watch me burn, but to ignite the light of Christ in you in so much that you will turn your life over to the Lord and see what he can do for you. Parenthetically, the above aforementioned fire comment comes from a quote in my first book, which incidentally you can get for free at www.jesusisthemark.com. Anyhow, the quote comes from my first sales mentor who taught me, quote, light yourself on fire and people will come for miles and miles away just to watch you burn. While on this note of being a light, a friend told me the other day he struggled with receiving compliments and putting himself out to be a light to the world. If you can relate, so can I. I really struggled with this concept when I was on a mission. Coming from a childhood of abuse, I was rarely complimented unless someone wanted something from me. So when I turned my life over to the Lord and was engaged in doing good, I began to get compliments, but I didn't know how to receive them. Fortunately, one of the couples I served with who would later become a ma the matriarch of our mission observed my difficulties and changed my life with her wisdom. First, she taught me, quote, a sign of humility is one who can receive a compliment. That's worthy of repeating. A sign of humility is one who can receive a compliment. Wow. Did that rock me as a 19-year-old boy? I thought I was being humble by not receiving or diverting these compliments. Have you ever heard someone say, for example, have you ever heard someone say, no, thank you, when you're trying to thank them? The intention is, is to be a humble often, but the reality is you're rejecting the compliment and not allowing the person giving the compliment the joy of the blessings that flow by noting that which is praiseworthy in you. Um, secondly, this wise um, couple that I, this wise sister that I served with, she, she taught me that, um, what I, what do I, like, seriously, I, I wondered, what do I do then? How do I, how do I receive this compliment that you say I need to receive? And she said simply, thank you. I know it sounds really simple, but at the end of the day, I didn't know how to receive a compliment. And those two simple words, thank you, have brought an immense amount of joy into my life and allowed me to receive compliments and knowing the joy that comes of receiving them makes it that much easier to look for good in others that I may know that which is praiseworthy in them. Furthermore, our master Jesus Christ taught, quote, therefore hold up your light that it may shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up, that which ye have seen me do. I, he, he goes on to talk about what he does. And in later in a, another chapter, I'm adding parenthetically here, he says that, Behold, what manner of man ought ye to be, even as I am. He also taught in... That was from, by the way, that first reference I just read uh, is from 3 Nephi chapter 18, 24. And then the parenthetic one is 3 Nephi 27, verse 27. And then he also taught in 3 Nephi chapter 12, verses 13 and 16, the following. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the salt of the earth. But if the salt shall lose its savor, wherewith shall the earth be salted? The, the salt shall be thenceforth good for nothing, but be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Just think about that for a moment. If you, if you, Why would you put salt in your food if it didn't add any flavor to it? <laughs> it and that's a, 
what what purpose is there of being a light on the hill of being the salt to the earth if you're not adding salt if you're not adding flavor if you're not enlivening if you're not recognizing that which is good in others and letting them know that which is praiseworthy so that they can continue to be praiseworthy and to continue to be engaged which reminds me i'll add another parenthetic thought in the book called working with the law by um uh, mr let's see raymond hollywell he's he he has an amazing chapter called the law of increase and in that in that chapter he discusses the the principle of praise and when you give praise people want to do better than what they've done they want to live better they want to grow and be more than they can on their own yet when think you've got it for a moment so when someone criticizes you you want to shrink you want to hide you don't want to perform you're like fine i won't do anything um so there's great power in recognizing good in others and letting them know what it is. Uh, so continuing with verse 14 here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be a light, be the light of this people. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Behold, do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light to all that they are, all that are in the house. And verse 16, therefore, let your light so shine before this people that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. In short, I invite you to turn your life over to the Lord. Allow him to work wonders in your life. Recognize the failures are the false traditions of men at work in your life. You are meant to glorify Father by becoming like him, not to please men, but to please Father. Do his work by making Jesus the mark in your life. And I promise you, you will find greater peace, power, and joy even amidst your trials and you among and among in that mentioning that power and as as well as receiving that power it also gives you the ability to overcome the world and i leave this, this message with you today and and I, before i conclude I, I i go back to the start with life change as you turn your life over to the Lord and put him as the mark and as the aim of who you want to emulate and who you want to be like, he will grant you access to the father and the father will can mentor you from that, from there on out in his name. And it's in his name. I say these words about life change and life, my personal life change and in your life and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me for a brief mental workout. Wise men do their mightiest works with their mental exertions. I encourage you to take time to ponder on the weightier matters of life and to govern your body with pure mental exertions, rather than having your body tell you what to do. You are welcome to connect with me further at my link in bio, where you can access my book, my social handles, my latest creative updates, and even request coaching services via email. I have been given much and am here to serve. Thank you, and God bless you to be fruitful in doing your mightiest works. Good day.